there and compress these bad boys. Oh yeah. Ford. We're in Brisbane this time, not Melbourne. So we're here for the Everest launch event. I've got to tell you, I've just checked out the Platinum. It's very, very classy. The Sport looks really good too. So let's have a look at what we've got. So we've got a V6 Platinum here. We have Everest V6 Sport. How nice is like the blacked out badges on this thing. I like that, that is sick. We have a bi-turbo. My first vehicle I'm in today is the uh, bi-turbo. Then more of a base sort of package. Then we have a platinum. Another Everest Sport. Check this thing out. It's like a burnt orange sort of color. The black looks freaking awesome. Very interested to see how the interior looks, the storage and stuff in the back, how much capacity and stuff you can actually fit in it. So yeah, let's get on the road and test these things out. behind the wheel of an Everest Sport. So this morning had a chance to uh, get into the base model in the Everest range. Uh, then we jumped into the Platinum, which is very, very classy. Uh, very nice panoramic style uh, sunroof and things like that in there. Very nice leather interior. Very, very premium feel. Currently in the Sport, the Sport is still very a nice option if you don't want to go to the Platinum. How, how the vehicle feels to drive. Uh, the front end is very much Ranger. The interior is just Ranger. They're basically identical, these two cars. But the rear is way more composed, obviously being an SUV and not being a ute. Um, with a Ranger, you definitely know that you're in a, in a ute. Now, after driving the vehicle for a couple of hours, my first impressions on it, it still feels very much Ranger. The rear end is very much in tune with the front and definitely they have that that, that the vehicle feels tied together. The suspension is, is working really well, front and rear, it's very smooth on-road. We haven't done any off-road experience in this in this vehicle yet. Hopefully we'll get to do that today. But I'm, I'm pretty impressed so far. It's very smooth, handles great. I love the electric steering that comes in Everest and Ranger. I think it's one of the best in the steer, it's def definitely in four-wheel driving. The, the steering in these is one of the best that I've experienced. So the V6 power plant in this thing suits this car perfectly. It's it's not over the top. Um, it's it's not underpowered. It just feels perfect for this size vehicle. Plenty of uh, get up and go. You put your foot into it and and you just start moving. It's it's really really well tuned. So you do have a third row in the Everest, which is uh, cool. 
So you, if you had a family of just five, you have plenty of st like storage in the in the rear. Uh, once you put those two seats up, but you pretty much lose majority of that uh, storage capacity in the back of the SUV. So if you had a family of five, you're still going to have massive amount of room for luggage, or even if you wanted to do a, a drawer setup with a fridge and things like that in there, plenty of room for that, and actually more room than what I thought. The interior in these things just feels so much bigger. It's definitely getting towards a, like an American style interior where it's much wider, more leg room, and just a way more comfortable place to be than, than our previous SUVs that have been here in Australia. I love that everything's increasing in size and just so much more comfortable for those big long drives. So we're about to pull up here for our stop number four today. So we'll uh, jump in another vehicle and we're just gonna keep rotating through all the vehicles today and I'll compose all my thoughts and everything and yeah, let you know what I think about the next gen Everest. <laughs> How sick is this? Camp Ford. Staying in some glamping tents tonight, apparently. Let's go find, let's go find my tent. All the Everests lined up. Where is my tent? I think I might be on the other side. How cool is that? <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Check this out. How yeah, good! Got some towels and chalky. Nice early morning start here on the Everest launch. Gonna take you for a walk through this platinum here. So very, very nice interior with the leather, platinum embroidered there, or plated actually, on the seats, which is very nice. Seats are all perforated. These seats actually do have AC cooling, so they're ventilated and heating, um, unlike Ranger, unfortunately. But um, yeah, so Everest does have AC and heating seats, where the Ranger just has heating. Again, very much the same as Ranger. You got your big screen here in the center, all your climate controls are down the bottom here. You also have them on the, on the iPad, I call it, <laughs> as well. So all your phone connectivity, and everything like that. So all the functions through this are pretty much identical to Ranger. You have your uh, front screens just here. Have all your cruise control buttons and obviously your uh, lane departure and things like that. Um, radar cruise control, all your fancy mod cons here on the steering wheel. Steering is very nice, like I mentioned. Electric steering on both Ranger and Everest is, is one of the best steering systems that I've ever felt in a new vehicle. So you have this really cool blue lighting that runs down through underneath the dash here in the Platinum. It's blinking on the screen because of the way that the GoPro films, but it's uh, it's just constantly, constantly on. Got you the uh, little controller here. As you can see, it just, just turned off then. You've got your brake controller and stuff here integrated exactly like Ranger. You can program up to 10 trailers in the system as well for towing. So on the Everest you have a three and a half ton towing capacity. Moving up to the top here, you have your panoramic roof controls. You also have a sunglass holder just there. But then you have all your functions just here for the panoramic roof, which is just there behind us. So lets a lot of light into the cabin. So it's very, very nice. Looks good. And you've got uh, all your ventilations in the roof as well for your AC. All the backs, all leather, 
as well, so very nice for the kids. Uh, rear seats are heated, not AC cooled, unfortunately. But just the, the level that the interior has stepped up now is, it is so classy. It is such a classy vehicle to, um, to be driving in. And it feels very, very premium um, compared to the last generation that I, uh, I test drive a couple, but not through Ford, but yeah. So in the center here, you do have the uh, electric, electronic uh, gear shifter. So if you, were, if you happen to walk inside and forget that you've left the vehicle in, in drive, it'll actually automatically go back to park. Got your electric park brake here. Have your uh, auto start stop off button here, traction control. Um, I think this is uh, for your parking assist. And then you have your train modes here. Um, this, this button here will bring up everything on the screen. And you have four high, four low, four A, two H drive modes. So when I press, when I press the terrain mode just here, it'll then bring up a screen showing me the whole drive line. So the transfer case, the front diff, the rear diff, um, downhill descent, um, rear locker. So I can option to put anything I want in downhill descent on and then also parking aid you can actually slide and turn that off which is nice and then you do have here as you turn the steering wheel you have your front camera as well which is which is really cool so wireless charge pad down here USB-C a normal USB down there as well your two cup holders with your little grippy feet here nice little center console there with a little tray Someone's already eaten the chocolate. 12 volt outlet in there as well. But um, very, very soft touch points in this, this vehicle. It's, it's, it's very classy. I keep saying classy because that's the word I'm, I'm kind of been using for the past couple of days driving this thing. So, but very, very similar. Pretty much identical actually to, to Ranger. A couple of little things here and there that are a little bit different. Down here you have all your light functions for your headlights. You also have a cup holder. So you also have a boot, so you can operate the boot from here. It's automatic tailgate. Turn these around and show you where it open up. So it's open now. Now I'll go ahead and I'll press that same button and it'll close it for us. Very nice. So one for the ladies, or the blokes that like to wear a bit of makeup. There you going. <laughs> you do have lights here and a mirror in the uh, sun visors. You've got your speaker here for your hands-free. I'm pretty sure that's what that's for. Same as on the other side. You've got lights on the other side as well. But I love the panoramic roof. It is so cool. So we'll just, let's play with that. Let's open that up so we can Open it up. We can go all the way back. Okay, so that's how far it goes back. And then we come back forward. So it's just the first front section that'll open for you. Close it back off, and then you can press that again. It'll go to like that vent mode, sporty mode. Then you can bring the shade. You can bring the shade all the way back in and completely close off. Very nice design here with the wood grain, and then you see that you do have that blue light that runs through underneath the trim there. Just doing some ambient lighting through the cabin, which is nice. These handles are very much like my F250s. I absolutely love this. So when you open the door, you're not pulling a handle here, then the door flying open if, if you're on an incline. You pull that and you actually, you have contact with the door so the door can't fly open. So handle and you're grabbing it at the same time. Got all your mirror controls just here, all your window controls. Uh, lock functions as well both driver and passenger seats are fully electric coming into the back again really nice trimming here on the doors so the back gets exactly the same as what's in the front and then you have the uh, the back where the kiddies go so you've got all your ventilation up there in the roof and stuff but very nice leather seats got some pockets down here you do have your uh, heated seats just there for the rear and then you do have your uh, air conditioning controls down there with the USB-C and a normal USB in this as well 
Okay, so to access the uh, third row, you drop the seat like that and then you can pull it forward just there. So you can actually gain extra, extra room for the back passengers and the leg if you want to move them forward. Got cup holders there in the rear. And then I think you do have a SIG socket over there on the other side. Speakers up in the rear, rear panels there. But even the back seat is a nice place to be, especially for a kid. Seats are pretty comfortable, so. And it feels a lot bigger than what I thought. Especially like from the outside, it looks smaller than what it is. But then now looking at it, especially with the third row, I'm like, it, it actually feels way bigger inside than the previous generation, which is always good. So as you can see there, this seat is slid forward and then yeah slides back again coming around to the back on the tailgate obviously you got your tow your tow bar and things there you got your uh, trailer plug it will press the back tailgate button got your camera so you got your sig socket just here and then there's that other SIG socket just down there that I mentioned before when we're in the back. So I haven't done this yet. We're gonna do this together. So we'll press this button here and your seats fold down. Check that out. It's a bit bloody fancy, isn't it? Press the right one. So you have a button for each seat. So when you press it, it goes up the other way. And then when you press it, it goes down the other way. So for left and right. The light just there on the side of the pillar. The little little pocket here, another cup holder just down there. But you definitely you definitely could put a um, put a draw system in here. Uh, it's just that incline, as you can see there. You'd have to have a custom draw set up made if you had just a standard set. They'd be on a on an angle, kind of coming down and out instead of dead level. So. I don't know if you can remove these seats. Um, well, I'm sure you could. You could remove them if you wanted to, to fit a draw system in here. But yeah, so I guess you could. You, yeah, you could remove them, remove the seats, put a put a put a draw system in here, custom draw system. Obviously, just because you'd want something that actually, if you're going to buy something like a platinum or any any of the Everest range, you want something that's going to fit very nicely in here. So under this one here, put your tow bar just in there. And then I think the guys were saying that in this section here, the ARB compressor will fit. Uh, I think that's from memory, that's what they said yesterday. So over here we have uh, all your tools for jacking the thing up when you get a, get a flat and you've got your wind point just there to wind your spare down. These little tabs here can actually act as a divider as well if you want them to. So you've got two, one on each side. They can act as a divider to put things either in the back or the front, or if you just got some items in there, you don't want them bouncing around, you can do that. So do have some, some tie down points here in the back as well. You got two there on the sides for tying down whatever you want. But the opening on the back end here is so much bigger than, than the previous generation. I think from memory, it was 40 extra litres of capacity than the previous generation. Press the button. Down she goes. So, very classy. All the platinum badging in here is like encased behind this, this clear lens. So, it's very premium feel, this, this version. So, you got to set of 275 45R21s on the Platinum and then depending on what barrier you get you can get all different types of tyres and ring combinations uh, whatever you choose basically from, from the, the selection that Ford has got your running boards down there along the side they're nice and, uh, nice and sturdy, don't know how they're going to go on uh, rock shelves and things like that but I don't think you want to be doing some serious off-roading if you're going to buy a platinum um, I'd probably go with maybe a sport and then build a sport up uh, one concern that I do have is the AdBlue tank 
So I was talking to the couple of other guys and apparently that's where the tank was on the last generation as well. So yes, this vehicle does have AdBlue. So that's a little bit of a concern for me, just for like off-road, whether that would be impacted at all. So hopefully ARB is developing or has developed something for the AdBlue tank. I'm, I'm not sure, I haven't looked at the catalog, but yeah, hopefully some aftermarket guys can actually make a, a case or a shroud that can go around that to protect it. So coming around the Everest, I definitely love the front end. These headlights are absolutely amazing. Performance LEDs in these things can actually turn and shift. They're actually uh, fitted with motors. So as you go around corners, the headlights just like Ranger, just like Wild Track, will actually turn with you. And then it actually turns off. Uh, the camera up there in the window actually detects when a car's coming towards you and turns off individual LEDs inside not to blind the, uh, the oncoming traffic. Got your little camera down there as well. But ARB have a massive catalog for this thing as well. So bull bars, um, suspension, rear bars, the whole works basically you can get from the ARB catalog as well. Popping the bonnet. So no, no, no gas struts here, but we have the uh, V6, same as Ranger in this variant. So everything is pretty much identical to Ranger up the front here. Do have your spare battery compartment just there to put the, the ARB bracket and stuff in to put a, a secondary battery underneath the bonnet if you wish. But the amount of room in here to work on this motor is, is absolutely awesome. There is so much space. One thing that I, I wish that Everest had was the auxiliary switches in the roof. Uh, none of the Everest range has those auxiliary switches, unfortunately. It's only Ranger that gets that. So you've got disc brakes all around. Um, independent front, same as Ranger. Then you do have the uh, Watts linkage in the back, similar to Raptor. Spare tire underneath. So is the Everest capable off-road? Uh, absolutely. I guess if someone sat me in the driver's seat without turning my head around to know that I'm in an SUV, I really couldn't tell that I was actually in an Everest or a Ranger because they're so, so similar. Basically identical if you were sitting in the driver's seat. The only way you could tell would be from the infotainment system, the cluster in front of you, that you're actually in an Everest because of the images on the terrain management control and things like that. So. It definitely is a car that feels like you're driving a Ranger from the front point of view. But again, like I mentioned, the back is very composed and you know that you're in an SUV because the rear end feels like it's part of the car. Unlike a leaf spring ute, you definitely know you're in a ute because the back end is designed to carry a lot of weight. The Everest obviously having the Watts linkage and having the independent front end. So it just works really well together. So Everest capabilities off-road is pretty much identical to Ranger, very capable four-wheel drive, even more so more than Ranger because of its shorter wheelbase and it being an SUV. So as far as tossing up your options for an SUV, uh, Land Cruiser 300 obviously being the V6 diesel variant, you got the Y62 which is a V8, but again, Y62 is a price pretty good. Land Cruiser 300s, again, they stopped taking orders for them. Plus, they are pretty heavily priced, overpriced if you ask me. And then you go with Everest because uh, you're still getting V6 turbo diesel, uh, but you don't really have the petrol cost that you would in a Y62, and you don't have the wait time of a Land Cruiser 300. So you may still have a wait time on Everest, but it's probably not going to be as anywhere near as bad as what you would if you're going to buy a Toyota. So definitely think that Everest does stack up. In, in so many different ways and being very, very capable. It's, it's just as capable as, as Ranger, has the same tech as Ranger, so don't think there's any issues there. And being a little bit more compact, maybe a bit better for your family than having such a big SUV, say like the, like the 200s, 300s and things like that. In my opinion, would I buy an Everest over a Y62 or a 300? Uh, definitely, I, I fell in love with the Platinum it is such a nice vehicle to be in and drive. Very luxurious feel. Very, very nice SUV.
So I suppose you're watching my channel to know sort of off-road capabilities and stuff. Very capable four-wheel drive, that thing. Uh, we did a few tracks and stuff. We're at the same location as we were when we test drove uh, Ranger Raptor. So we did all the same sort of tracks as Ranger Raptor. Obviously didn't go as fast as what we did in the Ranger Raptor on that track, but we did a few slow moguls and things, hill climbs, river crossings, um, a few bog holes and things like that. And Everest just smashed through everything, no issues at all. So, which leads me on to another thing that I wanted to talk about is that in the automotive industry, there is rumors that it does exist. There is an Everest Raptor that is down in the depths of Ford's R&D department. Don't think that it'll ever come to light here in Australia unless there's demand for it. So highly suggest if you would like an Everest Raptor is to ring your Ford dealership. Bring them and say, can I get an Everest Raptor or is there one coming? And as consumers, we need to create the demand for the vehicle. So yeah, apparently it exists. Um, from what I've heard in the automotive industry, there is a Raptor Everest that's sitting there. But again, I think Ford is very much tossing up things like Bronco as well for Australia. Once the demand in the US is kind of supplied, once the demand, all the supply is there for the US, I think we may see the Bronco here as well, hopefully in the future. I'd really like to see the Bronco here. So, but yeah, it's all about customer demand when it comes to what a manufacturer is gonna do. So yeah, I would definitely like to see a Raptor version of the Everest. I think that thing would be absolutely wicked. So wrapping up my thoughts on the Everest, I do like the new variant more than the previous generation. I did not like the old Everest. I think it was way too rounded at the back end. The new one has a very nice squared off rear end to it and is getting more, like I mentioned, that American big chunky squared off look, which I think is what all the styling is going to here in Australia. I think all the styling with the SUVs, especially with Ford, is going to that big squared off style of look like the, the Y62, the Land Cruiser 300, they have a, a very heavy presence on the road. So with the 50 millimeter increase in width and also the, uh, the front diff being moved forward 50 millimeters as well, it definitely gives the Everest a, a good planted look on the road, bringing those wheels right out flush with the guards. It def definitely has a, a better look than the previous generation. So, and definitely makes a statement uh, when, when you see it in the flesh. But with the wide range of ARB accessories that is available for Ranger and Everest, Everest has a massive catalog available from ARB as well. So you can definitely get everything for your Everest to build it up into a family tourer if that's what you're looking to do. So if I was looking for a family SUV right now, would I buy an Everest? Uh, 100%. With the wait times on the 300, the price of the 300, Y62 being a petrol, uh, V8, obviously fuel guzzler. Uh, Everest is at a price point that would be very appealing to me. Um, so yes, if I was looking for a family SUV right now, I think Everest would be the way I would go and probably build a platinum is what I would build up. So. That's my kind of final thoughts on Everest. If there's anything I've missed, make sure you drop it in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you and answer your questions. So also guys, if you want to visit my website, www.ftech.com.au, I have a bunch of gear on there. So go and check that out. Uh, heaps of stuff uh, for your four wheel drive. I've got merch and things like that. So go and check that out and I will catch you guys in the next video. See you.